we got a scoop, a scoop a loop. And you know, we don't scoop without having some backup, without knowing what's going on. It's very rare that we do this, but when we do, it's good to have uh, our, our information behind it in person, in face. That's also a, that's also a really good thing as well. As you guys know, that video that we did, Gina Carano's back, Camera Pasha was right, just knocked it out of the park, and tons of views. So I want to remind you guys, there's a lot of you guys that are not subscribed. I like right now, as of today, over 60% of you guys that have watched the channel are not subscribed. That is crazy. That is local. So subscribe right now. Let's bring in the man because we have not one, not two, but I think like two and a half, three scoop of loops to go over in regards to Star Wars. Our good friend, Cameron Pasha. Que pasó, hombre? Hola, hermano, and hola to all the uh, the wonderful uh, Slantinos. Uh, and yes, people should be subscribing. This is uh, this is really a very special and unique channel that's going to be the future. It's going to be the intersection point of the Latino community, which is the future of Hollywood and Hollywood. So uh, this is this is this channel is poised to become a, a part of Hollywood history. So everyone, get on board now. So let's define before we get into these scoops. Mm -hmm. uh, like as far as rumor to it being more substantive 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 substantial uh what what's your what's your procedure in regards to that yeah i mean this this is this is information that i put out on my patreon last night you're the first channel that i'm coming on to discuss it that's really putting it out there in the world outside of my subscribers uh and so it's you know, I, I put out I put out information in the past that's been like, okay, this is what my people inside Lucasfilm or Disney or other places are hearing, mm -hmm. uh, and there's times where I put out information that okay, this is this is what they've seen with their own eyes, that, or that they've been able to confirm in a way that's more than just somebody whispered in their ear. I think this happened in the office down the hall, right? Uh, and so I think this this is more of the latter type situation where my contacts inside the system have seen evidence of the things that I'm talking about, right? And uh, you know, and it was it was it, it was compelling enough for them to reach out to me over the weekend, which is un rare, right? Because mm -hmm. they have lives too, right? Uh, and uh, and so, but they reached out to me. I was actually, anyone's been following me, you know, I've been traveling internationally for a week now. I just got back into LA uh, yesterday, uh, and I was very tired and jet lagged. And then I got a surprise call from from my source, which I don't normally expect on the weekends. And then they gave me some pretty compelling stuff that uh, that tells us a little bit about where the future of Star Wars is going in very specific ways. Um, and uh, uh, and you know, and, and I thank you. It was, on, it was on your channel just a few weeks ago that uh, that you put out, uh, maybe just a few days ago, really. Uh, that Cameron Pasha was right video uh, because you know now we have the confirmations that Gina Carano at least has said publicly that she wants to return. Now uh, you know that's going to lead us into our conversation today about the most recent scoops that I've gotten. But you know, we put out or you, know, you put out on your channel a really interesting conversation about. Uh, how G Gina had, was saying in uh, in an interview a few days ago that that this lawsuit that she's been in she's been embroiled in a lawsuit for just a few months now uh, with Disney uh, you know to you know so it's for not for a large amount of money it's like seventy five thousand mm -hmm. dollars and to get her job back and and I've consistently heard the narrative not just in the general not just in the general fandom but also within my patreon and my colleagues people saying oh you know she's she this is just a fight on principle for her she doesn't want the job back she hates disney she hates star wars she you know and that she doesn't want this she just wants to win to clear her name mm -hmm. i'm like that don't make any sense you, you i mean you're partnered with an actress people want to work and people, absolutely i mean, I mean people want to work than that that was that was so such a great experience, uh, and we talked about this uh, being a key point is that her co-stars and her director, the creator John Favreau of the show, love her. Yeah, and Absolutely. she loves them. She doesn't. She has no resentment towards and them. She's never that them. stays with you. I mean, you know, yeah. Romy, uh, mm -hmm. that we know and love. I mean, you know, she'll talk about a, a, a movie that she did years ago, and still talk about those memories. In fact, those relationships are still with her well, to in, this day. My experience has been on a yeah. good shoot. You, yeah. you the people become family because it's like yeah. going to a little bit of a. It's a little bit of a, a conflict zone, a war zone. I don't want to. I want to war together. Cur yeah, creative they, war, you, absolutely. Yeah, you, um, you, you're there, and and so people bond, so, and so she mm -hmm. she bonded with them, and she said publicly she wanted to come back. That, that this is not just a 
you know, lawsuit to restore her name. Uh, it's she wants the job back, and then we put out a which, which kind, which there kind of already brand. upsets a lot, a lot of the, a lot of people who had reported because you know they they just want Disney and Star Wars to burn down. That's like yeah, they want it, and and they just enjoy they, the fight. They don't mm -hmm. enjoy get resolutions. <laughs> they're just they're, the complexity uh, of 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 the business so you feel confident so much you shared mm -hmm. it you're here with us let's get to the first one you're saying yes. uh that there is a not one but two drafts of a screenplay for the mandalorian film okay so so let's jump into it. so i have three scoops that came out of my conversation uh, with, with my source inside of uh uh, Lucasfilm slash Disney yesterday. Uh, one, the first one, which is really interesting in relation to what we're talking about, is that there are uh, at least two versions of the uh, Mandalorian and Grogu screen screenplay that are now floating around wow. the Lucasfilm office. Uh, and the and the earlier version is the one that they knew, which is you know whatever the standard story is. They gave me a little bit of a hint. I mean, they want to be careful about. They also they're they're actually loyal to Star Wars. They don't want to reveal. They don't want me scooping out all the stories because want sure. people to watch the movie, right? But they told me enough about where the story is going in a few months ago. Like the original script is going this way, uh, you know, you know, and we had Carl Weathers was in it, right? And you know, God bless him, he passed away. But original plan, he was in there, right? And his his character was there. Uh, and now a new script has been floating around the office, uh, which has. Uh, the Cara Dune character that didn't exist in the earlier script because she wasn't part of Star Wars anymore, right? Uh, and that character, Gina Carano's character, has been inserted into certain scenes uh, and has been given some pretty prominent stuff. Now, I don't, you know, some people said, did she take Carl Weather stuff? I, I don't have the details on that. I, I wouldn't surprise me if, if whatever Carl was doing, it would then go to her character. They, they in some ways overlap in the kind of heroism they have, right? So, but, but what's important is that there is a second script that is now floating around Lucasfilm, or at least a second script. Who knows? There may be multiple drafts, right? Uh, but that has Cara Dude inserted that people are seeing. People have seen it. And they're like, so obviously John Favreau, I mean, I'm a screenwriter. You know, I, right. I'm a busy guy, right? I've got to, you know, I'm just a busy guy in my own life. This guy, this guy is basically running a company in a shadow way, right? He's a very busy guy, right? And uh, he doesn't have time to sit around rewriting a script unless there's a reason to do it, right? So something has compelled him mm -hmm. to take the time and the effort to put a new character into the script, a character that shouldn't exist anymore, right? At a time when that character is under legal dispute. Wow. So that strongly suggests to me that at least Mr. Favreau has come to the conclusion that this is going to be resolved in such a way that that's worth his time to put a character he cares about, Cara Dune, back into the script. Now, you know, well, why does he come to that conclusion? You go ahead. Yeah, really quick. So you are are right because the 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 uh, Carl Weathers character has to be absorbed by yeah. by s somehow the existing characters. And this this is a this is a knockout. Like just bring bring Cara Dune's character back. That makes sense. That's not out of reach. And that's kind. If it if it's gonna be easy easy, Favreau knows all his characters. So a, a rewrite or a alternate script is not is not uh is is you know, it, it's not crazy talk. I mean, it's that, not crazy talk. I mean, it's you. I mean, as you know, and as as Romy knows, sometimes she's on set and she's getting she's getting new pages on the in the day. That's normal, right? Things happen. Absolutely. You know, at, you know and you got things happen, and you know it's, it's a constant chaos. Yep, yeah. that's right. You know, she just worked on a movie. She flew mm -hmm. in. Uh, a couple lines turned into a monologue. Boom! You got tonight. Boom! You're on. Yeah. You're you know, yeah. And 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 often it's on the yeah. day. It's like you come in, right? You know, like I said, sure. she she is a professional. She's like a couple yeah. lines. Well, she's she's now got to memorize you know six seven times what she thought she had to to prepare, right? And, and she's right. got to go with it as a professional. So you're but, always flowing every day. So but, so, but that, you're, yeah. so but you're saying that's doable as a because you're a screenwriter as well. I mean, mm -hmm. does this make yeah. sense? What you heard? I mean, it's it only makes sense if there's a reason for him to do it. What's because the reason? He's a busy guy. The reason is, the, is that he has come to the conclusion that that it's going to be resolved and that Gina will come back. He's come to that, and again, he look at. It's no surprise that we're having this conversation about a week or ten days after you put out that Gina's out there saying publicly, "I actually want to come back." This this mm. isn't this isn't pro forma. I want my job back. I like my job. I like these people. She said it right, yeah. and so in ten day within ten days, there's a new version of the script floating around after that. So something has triggered Mr. Faber to believe that this is going to get resolved. So let's look at the issue of legalities, right? Fascinating. Because yeah. a lot of people obsess over over, you know, the external forms. Oh, a few days ago there was reports that 
you, you know, Gina Carano refuses to accept Disney's claim that, that <laughs> right. she doesn't well, that's have her, right? Rights. She refuses the, the dismissal of the lawsuit. In, well, in, well for, first of all, when you sue somebody, of course you're going to refuse a dismissal of it. The other side trying to get rid of it. I mean, that, why is this news, right? Well, is this mm -hmm. like shocking news? that the, the other side is going to try to file a dismissal the lawsuit. There's no basis for it. Mm -hmm. we, and of course you're going to say, I filed it. Of course there's no basis for it, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's not news. But that, but, you know, but the, the trades, everybody got to put it out there. Like, what a shock, right? But secondly, people don't, people seem to think that the lawyers are the ones in charge of this situation. I'm a former lawyer myself, right? Mm -hmm. I left that to become a screenwriter. You know, I don't have my license anymore. Happy gave it away. I don't have, got time for it, right? But I, I was a lawyer. I went to law school, and you know, and I practiced in New York and in here in Los Angeles. And it's, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, back in New York, before I sold my first screenplay, I remember there was a time when I was associated with a big New York law firm, Paul Weiss. It's a, it's a big firm, but, and they do a lot of entertainment work. It represents a lot of Broadway and East Coast indie film and all that. And we were on a project. Uh, where uh, the, got a call from the partner saying you and a group of other associates, which are sort of young young lawyers or you know people join the firm, have to go prepare this this thing because we're about to file this major motion, uh, you know, in, in this huge lawsuit with billion dollar corporations fighting each other, and you guys are going to have to stay up all weekend and and basically till Monday morning. You have to do all nighter because we have to file this on Monday morning, right? So my whole weekend was shot, right? And uh, and we stayed there all the time going through documents, boxes of stuff, preparing things, you know, getting memos and research and blah, blah, blah. And I was up, like, like the partner said, Sunday night, all nighter, right? Sunday night, all nighter. And then and we were exhausted. It was like we're talking about bonding. We all felt like we've been through a war together. Mm -hmm. And we're tired. And 9 a.m. the next morning, as we're handing in the work to the partner, he walks in and says, thanks for all your work, guys. We settled it last night. Mm -hmm. What? But I mean, nobody told us. They just made us keep working, right? Because <laughs> it's billable hours, right? And so they just kept making it. And it's like, what? And, and, that, and that was your thing. He's like, you know, we're not in charge of this. This was settled by the two presidents of the companies. Be to, uh, they had like a dinner the night before and they said, hey, man, let's why don't we end this dispute? What do you want? You want this? I want uh, let's shook hands. And then, you know, then they bothered to tell the lawyers in the morning after we spent all night that we're not going to file this motion today because it's been settled because the two guys did a handshake the night before. Right. That's how this works. The so this, that could people. happen. That's what Favreau is seeing. That's you're, you're saying well, that, that, that it seems to be Favreau is one of the principles. Right. I mean, Disney is the principal. Right, mm -hmm. Lucasfilm is the principal, and Gina Carano is the principal. The lawyers mm -hmm. are the workers of the principals. They're the, the, you know, they they are the functionaries. They're the foot soldiers. So these are the two generals, and so one of the generals has now written a version of the script that has incorporated the other general. So it seems like there's at least some understanding at the principal level that a resolution is possible, right? And the lawyers are just going to keep filing motions until they're instructed by the principals, we are done. Gotcha. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, all right. Um, so that's huge news. So we have a version that, of the script floating around. That is that we, is with Kara has been inserted, and it's news because my yeah. my contact had, uh, Lucasfilm had not seen this before. Now, ten days after you reported this, it's it, there's a new version now. So, okay, let, let, let's go with this really quickly. Yes. So let's just say in the next ten days, yeah, this thing gets settled. God willing, yes. Do See the make, Do they make an announcement that she's back? Well, at some can point you, they're gonna have to make it. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> well, that will shake up everything, right? That'll shake up everything. And you know, the uh, person I mean, with regard to timing, I've mm -hmm. always said that they'll resolve it, you know, sometime around, you know, they'll resolve it in the near future because first of all, they gotta film, right? They gotta film. But they gotta, right. they gotta, they Isn't gotta there a pocket to film coming up. Yeah, they gotta get there. I mean, we know that they're they've got at least you know, my people have confirmed that they've got like location scouting going on. I mean, there's mm -hmm. real prep being unlike the fake Ray movie that there's nothing being done on it, right? right there's real right. work being done on it. So that means they have a schedule, right? And they got to get this movie out. And, and I think it's been announced for 2026, I think. But uh -huh. they got to get, I mean, it takes a long time to film a Star Wars movie. And so now they got to finalize that script. They got to get, they got to get the, because let's say her character comes back, a lot of people are impacted. The costumers have to get involved, the props people, mm -hmm. right? Other people got to start preparing Cara Dune. Right, yeah. and they have been working on Cara Dune as part of the plan. Now they gotta, oh, we gotta now get the co her costuming. We gotta bring her in for you know all the stuff that Romy has to go through. She's got to do hair tests, all that stuff. It's all before any filming happens, right? Right. So they got all complete the crew game changer. Yeah, yeah, the crew has to get busy with 
oh, we got a new character. We got to deal with it. And so, so okay. they have to announce it in the near future. Uh, timing wise, you know, there's still allegedly this acolyte is supposed to come out in a co- two or three weeks, right? For June fourth, right? Let's save that conversation. I do want to ask you about okay, that. Okay, well, but... we'll talk about that. But but it, it would it would be it would be certainly interesting. Uh, if there was an announcement before, uh, you know, before that time in early June, yeah. there's a resolution. I, I, okay. I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Okay. All right. Let's go to Sigourney Weaver. Okay. Sigourney so, right, Weaver so this... was announced that she's part of the film. Well, no, no. She was announced that uh, the, the rumors is the talk is the point the trades have, have confirmed the talk that there is a negotiation of, for her to join uh, Mandalorian and Grogu. I, I mean, I don't know that it's concluded. My mm-hmm. person has not heard that, that they that they've shook hands on it. Right. But mm-hmm. uh, but apparently th- that is a real conversation of Sigourney to be cast. Now, what's 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 the exclusive is the definition of her character she's not a jedi she could be a jedi she might be something well else. as of now and again scripts as we're noticing scripts change right, right. as of now the the offer that's being co- uh, is for a specific character in the script and the character is not a jedi it's not a female jedi but apparently the character is actually a female smuggler sort of a han solo type so you've got an interesting uh, you know, smuggler character. You know, smugglers by nature are a more chaotic neutral, right? Mm. You know, they just they're just trying to survive, right? You know, they're mm-hmm. doing their thing. And so, so because going to Fe- Weaver is apparently uh, the role she's up for, negotiating for, is this female smuggler, this female Han Solo character, right? Uh, that's mm-hmm. uh, that's in there, uh, which is interesting. You know, she's a really compelling actress. You know, she's one of the great action heroes. She's mm-hmm. one of the great science fiction heroes. Yeah. Uh, of 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 two generations, right? I mean, she's I mean, she's 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 really the 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 the, the star queen, like the stars queen, like like Jamie Lee Curtis is the scream queen, mm. the sci-fi queen, right? And you know, yeah. and uh, going back even to Galaxy Quest, I mean, this is she's one of the greats, and so to bring her into like a character that you know, Jedi are required to be a lot more um, emotionally, you know centered mm. and she has such intensity like that we saw in alien and all of her roles to give her the fun of a smuggler character a smuggler character is like a han solo right they're doing yeah. what they need to to survive and she's a survivor i mean what we think of sigourney weaver we think of survivor that's the that's her palette in in films she survives she comes out on top she beats the alien right and she and she emotes intensely so that's a great character for her that would be fantastic okay and so you're saying that it's not set in stone well, I mean, as as far as we know, as far as my person knew, as of yesterday, there's it's still an ongoing, you know, negotiation with her agents and her people. So I don't think she signed on the dotted line. And let's say she signs on the dotted line today, right? Uh, they mm-hmm. she still has to then review the whole script or whatever they're going to give of it to her. Of her. Mm-hmm. And then you know she's a significant star. She's a movie star, and so she may come back and say, "I don't want to do it this way." She's the kind of person that comes back and says, "You mm-hmm. know, I don't want to do it." You know, I actually. I, I, let's change this from a smuggler to this kind of thing. Favreau is going to listen to that, right? I mean, she's as of now, she's the biggest movie star that is being associated with this. And people I had this conversation on my Patreon. A lot of people assumed it's just going to be some cameo. Like, you know, I was like, no, no, no. This no. is this is this is Sigourney Weaver. That's an she's incredible, incredible waste if it was just a cameo. Yeah, it's a cameo. And this is John Favreau, who is a movie maker. He's a he's the guy that, and he's a fan. He's a fan, and he reintroduced right. Robert Downey Jr., who has now won the Oscar. He mm. saved that man's career, right? This guy, this guy, he's very loyal. And he, uh, yeah. So let's go. That to the last scoop is uh, Favreau's mm. long game, and that's what I had pointed out in the in that video where it says Gina's coming back. Cameron was right. Was the long game vision of Favreau? Because people were like, "Oh, he's gone. He left." Like, well, yeah, we've been hearing that for a year. In fact, we started hearing it again. I was like, again, like what? Then the, I mean, I mean, as I wrote on my Patreon, how many times does this guy have to quit? How many times yeah. does he have to quit? I mean, I mean, come on. Uh, it's like, it's like this is a narrative that the fan the fandom gets pulled in. It's like some people when they when they're just not getting enough attention or clicks. Fran mm. Favreau has quit Star Wars. I was like, I mean, it's it's silly stuff, right? I mean, you don't. This guy's this guy's. The one I mean, we had this narrative law of, all of last year. I I was saying this, and I was saying it on your channel. My people say he still. My people say he still got his parking spot, and they see him in the office. What, what are you saying? He's quit. They don't know what they're talking about, right? Inside of Lucasfilm, but that became the narrative. Everybody went with it, and Cameron Cameron doesn't know anything. He's not even a real screenwriter. He's not. People saying all kinds of crap against me, and then then January after six months of listening to garbage about he's quit, mm. and that's a consensus on YouTube. It's a consensus. 
Mm-hmm. Like people don't know nothing, but that was a consensus. And then January, he suddenly announces, "Well, I'm doing Mandalorian Grogu," and they're like, and "Nobody's." They're like, "Well, Favreau's." Didn't see that. He, I mean, six six months he's been quit, and now he's making a movie, right? And yeah. and then after that, like a, a couple of weeks ago, the same nonsense started again. He's quit again. I'm like, why would he quit? He's making a movie. It's going to take at least three or four years, right? Amazing. I mean, and he's quitting now. I mean, come on. I mean, these people spread this stuff, and and sadly, a lot of people want to buy this stuff. So I mean, I'm t- I, I'm mm-hmm. peddling the truth. You're you're selling the truth, and you know, and yet people that are not selling the truth have buyers, and they still so, buy it. So whatever. So but, so that was so yeah. that narrative is nonsense, right? It doesn't make sure. any rational sense, right? Guy just announced a huge several hundred million dollar movie is quit. Right. I don't know. Yeah. That doesn't make so, but we talked about it doesn't make sense in his long game. So what is mm. John Favreau's long game? Right. So Favreau is an interesting character. Uh, he's different from Dave Filoni. You know, I met Dave Filoni uh, years ago. I met him once. I interviewed for the job of, of a head writer for an animated show that would become Clone Wars. Right. That was, the, mm. and I didn't get that job. Instead, I ended up working as the head writer for the Tron anime show. That was my animated year. It was 2010 or so. And uh, and I met him once. And he and I, what I, the impression I got of Filoni compared to John Favreau was Filoni was a guy that's very much a corporate man. You know, he he's long he's a long term employee he was he was john he was george lucas's employee right and kissed up to george <laughs> lucas became his mentee mm-hmm, and then right. when it becomes part of disney he's a disney guy now i you, you know i worked at uh i worked at disney at tron right and that's a very corporate environment everyone who survives that knows how to play a corporate game and 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 they see themselves as a cog in a machine trying to get the cog as high up as it can right and they're they're corporate employees uh I didn't survive there because that's not how I think. I think more like a little bit more like John Favreau, who's a, who's a filmmaker, he's an independent filmmaker, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and so so Mr. Filoni is he's a corporate guy. He's going to do whatever the boss says. The boss says go speak at that feminist convention, talk about the you know how great Ray is. He's going to go do that, and people are shocked by that. That's what the boss told him to do. He's going to mm-hmm. go do it, right? Uh, he's he's not an independent guy. Whereas John Favreau is an independent guy. He's an he's a filmmaker. He's not a corporate guy, right? He does his thing, and he does his thing at a very high level. And so how does one become a guy like that? Look at Favreau just in his life. He's a long-term player for his career. He's an ambitious guy. He had a plan when he when the M- MCU didn't exist, and they like, John Favreau wasn't the biggest filmmaker in the world, mm. right? But they came to him, and the MCU was his untested idea. And he's like, let's do Iron Man. Let's do Iron Man. Mm. Of all these, there's all these interesting characters. You all got, the characters, oh, you yeah. Or you got all these. You're gonna do Iron Man. You got Captain. You, you, let's do Iron Man. And you know what? Let's do Robert Downey Jr., who hasn't worked in like six or seven years. He's been in jail, right? Let's put him as the star of Iron Man. So that's a dude who's looking years ahead. Like he sets in motion the MCU that we have today. He sets in motion Robert Downey Jr. winning the Oscar for Oppenheimer. Mm. That was impossible 15 years ago. I mean, he was done. Right, he had become like sadly what we often think of poor Lindsay Lohan. Like you know, we think of somebody who had a huge shot and then sort of faded huge away. Talent, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and uh, thank God she's coming back. I like her. Uh, but but you know, but so this is a guy who thinks that far ahead and sets things in motion. And the way he does that is, he's not a corporate guy like Mr. Filoni, but he knows how to play that game better than me. I got fired from Disney, right? I'm open mm-hmm. about it. I got fired from Tron because I wouldn't play that game. I spoke truth to power, and that means pack up your box and go, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you speak truth to power, power wins, right? So he knows that. So he's like, all right, well, I need to achieve my objectives. So I'm going to play along. I'm going to hide my long-term agendas. I'm going to smile and take it. Things go wrong. I'm going to flow with it. You know, my character, Cara Dune, that I created, that was very important to me, that and it was important to me that I created it for Gina Carano, who mm. liked that, who like Robert Downey Jr. and people didn't really see as as becoming a major person in Hollywood, right? Again, for Downey had been out, and she was just seen as an MMA star uh, who was doing small movies. She was doing small films, and he's like, I see something in her. I'm going to make this character for her. And then all this nonsense happens, and she gets fired, and his character, the character's taken out of his plan. That's like a ten year story plan been ripped apart. He, right, he a potential movie for her or series, he, right? Exactly. He yeah. he doesn't do what everyone claims he does, which is he quits. You know, I mean, this guy, this guy, if he's going to quit, he would have quit at that moment that you're interfering. Yeah. Miss Kennedy, you've come in, you've thrown out, you didn't even consult me, you've thrown out my lead actress that has that I was going to create a TV show for, that I was do this for and that for. He didn't quit then. He said, "I'm going with it. I'm flowing with it because I get because I know it's a long term game, right? And when I have power, I'm going to." 
turn the river in the direction I want it back. You know, you know, it got derailed. Well, I'm going to create like an irrigation system and push it back where it needs to go, right? And so that's what's happened. So that's the long term. His, he's always patiently waited, slowly done things. Like people have liked a lot of what he's done. Not everything he's done because he's still in a corporate environment, but he's done a lot of good work uh, in The Mandalorian and other stuff. People didn't always like everything, with, you know, they did like in Boba Fett, whatever. But he's trying to fix it. And he's doing the best he can in that ridiculous corporate environment where everyone's backstabbing each other and, you know, people are trying to push out his actors mm -hmm. and he's surviving. So now the third scoop is what we've been following. If anyone's been following recently in the in the business media, uh, the Forbes magazine, one of the big sort of big financial investor magazines, not just for Wall Street, but for the general public. Right. Forbes has been doing almost weekly a series of exposés. Uh, you know, the, the, the Karen Reed, I believe is her name, is this investigative journalist at Forbes mm -hmm. who's been putting out one hit against Disney after the other. Very specific. She she started off about three or four weeks ago where she put out a thing, which, again, I've said people didn't listen to me, but I've said it years ago. She put out an article in Forbes saying attacking Lucasfilm out of nowhere at a strange time. Like, why is this coming out? where she said, Lucasfilm, by the way, has not actually made back its money on Star Wars. After 14 years, they're still, you know, in the red under the accountants, right? They haven't, they invested mm -hmm. $4.1 or so, bought it from George Lucas, and they should have made this much by now to cover that. They haven't, despite, uh, you know, all these, the sequels trilogy, she said, didn't make the money back needed to mm -hmm. justify the Star Wars purchase. And it's still in the, in the red today, 14 years later. So that was a hit piece like on Lucasfilm. And it came it like, where's this coming from? Why is this coming out now? This right. was right around the time that you had um, the proxy war being settled uh, in, in Iger's favor. And then suddenly a few days after that, this attack on Lucasfilm comes on Forbes. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks after that, there's another attack on another Disney studio on Marvel, which said that Ant-Man and Quantumania has been hiding its losses. So you had so first attack is Lucasfilm has been hiding the fact that it has still not made a profit on Star Wars. Right. So Lucasfilm is hiding money, a financial loss. The next article is Marvel is hiding a financial loss. It's that Ant Man and Quantum Mania was actually uh, the budget had ballooned to like over two hundred million dollars more than they told people. Like you know, in the trades in America, and she found that by going into uh, what she does, she, what she did with Star Wars, uh, she goes into uh, into financial filings that others hadn't noticed and puts the mm -hmm. numbers together. So she found some financial filings in the UK that said Ant Man and Quantum Mania have made money. Third thing now, now, and this brings us to our scoop. Out of nowhere, this weekend we got to hit number three let again. Me, let me just let me let me let me add one more by oh, by Caroline, you. which please. I did did a video on. Okay, getting great numbers came out a few days ago, less than a week ago. The 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 strike against Snow White Disney uh, and how they're actually paid women less than on on the cast and crew, which was like a huge thing. Yeah, so for Disney never, claiming to be a progressive company, yes. Yeah, the hypocrisy of Disney. So you're onto something as far as this pattern. That's like a that's like the third or fourth story now. So well, and, and you know and there's the Ian Fleming, the creator of, of of James Bond, said very famously the line that's in one of the James Bond books. You know, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. There you right? go. And so and three times, Ms. Reed in the last month has been yeah. focusing on taking down parts of Disney. Right. Correct. And taking down the, the stuff that the fans have been upset about. Correct. Fans have been it, grumbling about Star Wars. And, fans have yeah, been grumbling about a Marvel. Now they're grumbling about uh, Cinder, uh, about Snow White. They've been grumbling about that. She takes that down. Right. Mm -hmm. And in that first paragraph from mm -hmm. that, just, just a quick recap. Yes, Despite please. the movie being hailed, Snow White, as a showcase for diversity, equity, and inclusion, women just occupy 30% of the highest paid jobs. <laughs> yeah. And, and and so and so there. She's just, she's just reminding you guys. Okay. Yeah. So we're not, you know, this is all making sense now, Cameron, what you're going to talk about. So now, the, now, now, I guess fourth action, enemy action number four came out, uh, you know, uh, this uh, this weekend. I wrote a Patreon piece before I got a call from my source. Uh, and and the, and it was about the newest article on Forbes, uh, which has just come out now, came out this weekend, apparently, uh, mm -hmm. is that, you know, that you've got, you know, more more troubles, uh, you know, at Lucasfilm. You got Willow. Willow, which is you know one of George Lucas's um, creations under Lucasfilm, that was that Ms. Kennedy attempted to to do her own version of. They did a, the Disney Plus show, and let's just say it was poorly received by the fans. 
And then mm -hmm. to everyone's shock and, and, and to the outrage of the people involved in the show, Disney pulled the show from the server. Yeah. You can't watch Willow anymore. There is no spoon. Yeah, there's no spoon. <laughs> they pulled it, right? I mean, it's not like they're, they're like leaving it there that maybe some people watch it and they can monetize yeah, yeah. it on accounting papers. They pulled it. They're taking a full loss on it. And I mean, the, and that was, you know, the, the creator of that show was outraged. He was, he was out there saying, this will not stand. Well, it kind of did stand, right? And the show never came back, right? <laughs> and so this will wow, not good stand. Good luck with that. Yeah. yeah well, so, and so. That's but, just that to you, save their own face with their friend, with their Yeah, with I mean, because it's friends. humiliating. Yeah. It's humiliating that you're pulling this thing off of. I no, mean, it, it sucks. That that part of it really sucks is, is yeah. you know, is that there, these are, uh, there are a lot of talented people just trying yeah. to do their best. And. It got it got the uh, yeah, and that, they're never going to get any residuals on it. They're not going to get anything on of it, right? You know, there's a, you know that's, that's all. You know, had Romy gotten a role on that, she would have thought, you know, you right, know, I made it a Boom. few years from now. She'll be getting <laughs> checks from it as people are watching it. That's gone for good. That's gone. Right. right? So, so what does that have to do with this? So so, so what, she so yeah. she here she goes. So she put out this thing about how Willow actually yet again we have an example like in, in the sister studio of Marvel in Lucasfilm Willow was hiding the numbers and she yes. went through UK filings wow. and she found the actual data and said this is this thing you know the budget had exploded to over 150 million dollars and there was no way under any financial system they had set up that they were going to make a profit on that the budget was too big on willow mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. why they pulled it that's why they said we just have to kill this thing and take a loss on it you know uh with with the irs right and maybe we can at least cover some of our you know losses that way right uh, you know and so that was her thing so i was like okay well here we go here's attack number four yet again showing now this is the second attack on lucasfilm first one is you're hiding the fact that you, you you've not made money on star wars after 14 mm -hmm. years and now you're hiding the fact that willow the other big lucasfilm production has uh was massively over bloated in budget right mm -hmm. showing that the people making these decisions are incompetent so again who are the who's the person who's never named in these articles that's, mm. that's being targeted it's kathleen kennedy she's not even you know she's not even named in the willow thing right she's not being <laughs> named in the willow thing but i mean yeah. who's responsible who's responsible for 14 years later star wars still hasn't made a profit you know after the sale Who's responsible for Willow's uh, budget going to $150 million so that it became such a loss that they had mm -hmm. to pull it? I mean, that's the, the he, she who shall not be named who is not named. And that's how you know in Hollywood how things work. Is the mm -hmm. person not being named is the person you're talking about. It's just like it's like it's like the Mean Girls. Oh, this thing, thing, yeah. Yeah. yeah so because any of this, let's let, let's review any of the Star, six, Star Wars success, right? Not, not talking monetary. You can yeah. argue that. Yes. Uh, Andor and uh, Mandalorian yes. weren't in her in her control. Her, yes, in her control control. Yeah, what's well, been in her control control is that she's fired and hired a, a lot of uh, very talented people, a lot of failed projects. Yeah, and Willow was her baby. Willow was mm -hmm. uh, was she was in charge of that publicly. We're very proud mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's attack on her. And so now you've got two things where Kathleen Kennedy. So now we're going to get to our scoop. So the, the, this ties into what happened just a few days ago, which I report on my Patreon as well. Mm -hmm. I've been saying and been mocked and and laughed at for a year now that that she was that Disney at least had ordered her to get ready to step down. I, Iger wanted her a year ago out and to take mm -hmm. what we call the Viking funeral, which is we're going to give you lots of great press. The idea was it was supposed to have started celebration. She hijacked that by announcing this Ray movie that is still not happening, right? But so it was supposed to be lots of press, you know, yeah. of how great she was, talk about her legacy. And you, you, you and I, we're both in LA. We know when we start seeing those stuff about how great someone's legacy was, it's because their legacy's finished, right? They're being asked to move on, and we're going to give you all these accolades of your, you know, your your great achievements so that you'll be remembered well. Mm -hmm. You don't do that when you still have a career ahead of you, right? No, no. No, it's been one disaster after another. Indiana Jones is probably yeah. like the, the yeah, final, uh, final. Yeah, it was a massive one. loss. It's probably the biggest loss in history. Massive. Yeah, massive, yeah again, yeah. because the numbers they're reporting are wrong. As we're seeing now, Forbes is showing the numbers they mm -hmm. report are wrong. So it's, I said a year ago that Indiana Jones is bigger loss than they're claiming, and it's going to end up being the biggest loss in history. I'm sure in the near future, Forbes will report that when they are able to get the data, right, the, the hidden data. So, right. so I think the criticism uh, that went towards you really quick was that, well, huh, it didn't happen. It came and went. How come yeah, she's still there? Because, because hello, Cameron. What's wrong time. with you? Things take time. <laughs> things, especially when someone doesn't want to go. Especially in Hollywood. Especially in Hollywood, when you got a studio head that don't want to go, 
Mm. And it, it, it takes time, right? And so, but now it has begun in the sense that we had, we haven't heard from Kathleen Kennedy in months. We haven't heard from her in months. Yeah. She vanished, right? You don't have to believe anything I say. You can just object to look, where's this woman? Yeah. When, when Carl Weathers, when, when uh, he passed away, who puts out a press release from Lucasfilm honoring him? John Favreau. Mm. Why is John Favreau, who's not even supposedly a, a formal employee, he's like a contractor for Lucas? Why is he putting out a statement? Why isn't the head of the studio? Where's why isn't Kathleen Kennedy saying Carl Weathers was such important to me and blah blah blah? She mm. didn't even speak up, she vanished. So that's she's been gone. Nobody's heard anything from her, right? Okay. And then suddenly we hear from her a few days ago that ties in now. I know we're waiting for the scoop, but we're tying it all in, right? She we hear from her a few days ago. Suddenly she's back in in, in the media in that she's at some some uh, baseball game, throwing out the first pitch or whatever, right? And uh and then she's doing an interview. I think it was in Boston, right? She did an interview with local news uh, with a local news there doing her Viking funeral, which the whole interview isn't about, you know, how excited you are for this and that. It's all about let's look at your career. Look at the wonderful things you've done. Indiana Jones, E.T., blah, blah. And just a long list of her great praises looking back. And then they ask her, well, what are you looking forward to? And you would think she would say the two things that she's associated with. The Ray movie. I'm looking that, forward to right. that, right? She right. don't mention that because there's no Ray movie that ever was. But she never mentioned that. And, and The Acolyte, which is supposedly coming out in two weeks. You'd think at least she'd say, I'm really excited for my show that's coming out in two weeks. Mm. She don't mention it. Mm. What does she mention? She says, well, the Mandalorian Grogu, right? You know, <laughs> which is she's even involved in. She's <laughs> even, she didn't even put out a press release when one of the actors from Mandalorian, the, you know, Carl Weathers passes away, right? Oof. So how is yeah. she involved in this, right? So, but that's what she's talking about. And it's right. kind of a, like a defeated woman saying, well, there's, the, the future is that. It's not me. It's not my projects, right? So that comes, so the Viking funeral has begun. And so, but people are trying to praise her. I've come here to praise Caesar, right? Her very aunt's very Caesar, right? And so they're doing it. And what happens right after that? I get this call. So third scoop is this, which is that all these Forbes articles that we're seeing are a hit. They are an intentional hit, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't disrespect the investigative work that Ms. Reed is doing. She's doing really great work. But I know from my own experience as a former journalist, as someone who deals with the trades and deals with the the news media here, is that studios influence the, the trades. Uh, you should look into this. You might want to look into this because one of those, a lot of the interesting things Ms. Reed is doing is she's finding stuff that's been hidden away. Like she'll find out mm. like the name of a secret LLC or corporation in the UK that's the mm -hmm. base of production that's hidden, right? That's not publicly known. And she is an investigative journalist will find that out. It is certainly, even before I got the scoop, it was certainly seemed to me like somebody at Disney could easily have called somebody at Forbes saying, why don't you look into XYZ Corp in UK? Look into that, right? Like someone's given these names out. So the names are coming from somewhere. She's finding them out from somebody. There are some source that's giving her these hidden corporate names that she can then find the actual finances on, right? And so I was like, well, I theorize it sounds like somebody inside of Disney, probably somebody being sent by Bob Iger himself to you know to to take out his enemies like to mm -hmm. get rid of the people that are causing the embarrassments that he's had to take the sword for including you know including willow including ant-man including you know including now snow white and now you know we got this so, so i was like somebody's leaking this that was my presumption mm -hmm. and then my person inside of lucas was like they found evidence that it, it's not just that yeah 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 right bob Iger is actually communicating with forbes somebody at forbes and giving them, them information but it's not just him. It's, it's Mr. Favreau himself. He's part of that, that this is a joint effort. This ain't just the CEO of Disney. This is a joint effort by Favreau to, to get attention to, to uh, damning information about Lucasfilm to Forbes. But why would he do that? That, that doesn't make sense. It does make sense. Why would he do that? Because who is, who is because he's trying to, because he's going to do a Lucasfilm film. He's it's right. in production, but I, I'm just playing a little devil's advocate. No, no, yeah, yeah, and, and I know there'll be my, my, my adversaries inside the system will certainly be saying that, right? Yeah, but it's, you know, he's, who is affected by this? It is the people that cause the problems that have caused him problems. Because again, who is the unnamed figure inside of all of these articles? It's Kathleen Kennedy, right? He ain't responsible. John Favreau is in no way responsible for Willow. He wasn't on that, right? I don't think anybody thinks that, right? Gotcha. And gotcha. John Favreau isn't in any way responsible for because the original article was that the sequel trilogy failed to make back the money it needed to. We gotcha. know he wasn't involved in the sequel trilogy. He doesn't come on board until that thing's a few years in the past and people are upset about it, right? 
right? So so he's not responsible for that. The person that's being attacked in Forbes is Kathleen Kennedy, if not by name, but by action, right? And, and so, you think also, too, they did it on purpose. You cannot mention her name. I'm going to give you some info. Well, like, yeah, I mean, because because then it becomes too obvious, right? right. Because then, then, then it's a hit and she has to defend herself. Then she has to put out press release saying, I did this and that and it's not accurate. But if her name's not in there, what's she going to say? It's amorphous Disney that's being attacked for her decisions, right? So she can't say anything, right? Uh, unless she wants to say, if she responds, then she's taking responsibility, which only makes her look worse, right? So she can't respond. And so that's, and, but what it does is now you, you're taking away the very thing that she had been offered a year ago by Bob Iger, according to my sources, which mm -hmm. is take your Viking funeral, take your victory lap, get all this praise and leave in dignity and will only say nice things about you. She didn't do that. Now what they're doing, now she's trying to do that. Now she's doing the, look at all the wonderful things I did, mm -hmm. and they're sabotaging it. They're like, no, baby, you're going to go. You're going to go, and you're going to go in shame because all this stuff. We try to do that up, with you. Yeah. Yeah, we try to be nice with you. We try to say, go with dignity, go with dignity, and we're only going to say good things about you. When I was fired from Disney, it was a wow. sort of, when that moment came when I was called in the executive's office, and I thought yeah. I was a meeting. I came in with a plan for, for these episodes. I thought the meeting was for that. Like, okay, yeah. this is the next episode. Here's the story plan. I came in with it. And they're like, yeah, we don't need that. You know, we, fortunately, we have to make a change. I was like, yeah, I didn't expect that, right? Okay. And so I was like, all right, I'm let go. But what they did was they didn't want to make me an enemy. They basically said, you know, just uh, look, you know, you, you, did, you did your best here. It wasn't the right fit, blah, 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 blah. Um, you go in peace, i.e. don't sue us. Don't sue us. Don't make any claims of discrimination or anything else. Right. I'm a brown Muslim guy. They're always afraid of that, right? Don't do it. You go in peace, and we're only – number one, they say two things. There was a quid pro quo. They said you go in peace without creating any problems, right? We will pay out your contract. You know, you just go. We'll pay out the, the rest of your contract. I was like, okay, money, fine. A work yep. money. I'll money. Pay, pay to not work. Pay, Got it. We'll pay out the, the entirety of your contract even though we're not moving forward for the next six months, right? Number two – we will only say nice things about you when people call for references for future jobs. Fantastic. Okay. okay. We have an understanding. I said, we have an understanding. And I left. That's been 10 years. So I'm still grumbling about it. Right. But I, I was like, you know, I was like, you know, I'm not going to sue you. I'm not going to create any problems. You're sure. not going to create me a problem for me. I won't create a problem for you. And we're gone. Right. That's what was offered to her. You leave. We're gonna we're gonna pay out your contract. Level, we're gonna give you the the we're gonna give we're, you the yeah, humanitarian. You're gonna have of the documentaries made about you, ABC News, about how great you are, right? We're gonna do all this, and right. she didn't take it. Imagine had I imagine had I walked out of that meeting at Tron at Disney, and mm -hmm. the next thing I did was do an interview for the Variety about how racist or anti-Muslim bigoted or whatever mm. crap it seems I wanted to make, right? Uh, right? You know, how I was targeted. Imagine I did that expose for Variety about look how they treated a brown guy, right? Right. Then I they would not have paid out the rest of my contract, and then they would have defended themselves by saying, well, if Mr. Pasha claims he was let go because of this and this, it was because this and this, his performance wasn't good. Then they would have attacked me, right? Because you don't do your part of the quid pro quo, which is we're all friends here. We don't want to call mm -hmm. nobody, no problem. We good, right? She didn't do her part, right? She didn't do her part. And so now as she's trying to do the, you know, it, this wasn't like Disney set up the interview with the, the local boss newspaper. She's out there in the field and they're interviewing her and she's trying to praise herself. So right after that, what happens three days after that, Forbes comes out and says, your willow was massively incompetently managed. So that's your legacy. Gotcha. So there goes her legacy. They're not going to let her yeah. go in peace. And my source is like Favreau's part of that. He's like, this woman caused him such problems for years. So we go back to what we began with, the, the long game. It's not just long game long and planning game. out his strategy. It's the long game of planning out his revenge. I mean, we think you think you think you think John Favreau is Jedi? He's Sith. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's Sith. He right. Don't get on his bad side. You don't get on his bad side. A guy like that don't survive Disney, you know, yeah. all these years and, and staying on track when things like, you know, Gina and all this. Gina's well, firing I mean, this, national drama, worldwide drama. Since the 90s. Look at him. Yeah. And, and, and he's like doing it and he's kept his dignity. But we think what Gina Carano's firing was worldwide drama. Yeah. You don't think that affected his life? Sure. Worldwide drama that Gina Carano has been fired. Yeah. Worldwide yeah. news, right? You know, the character that the woman he vouched for. This is what people don't understand. I vouch for somebody, that person goes down, it's an attack on me. Mm. Right. I had this mm. conversation once with a with a young mentee of mine. I brought him in as an assistant on one of my shows. Mm -hmm. And he was a Muslim guy and a talented young guy. And I brought him in. He was a friend, he was a personal friend. 
And then he started creating drama on the set. He started getting into arguments with people. He started not doing his job, right? I called oh, him into boy. my office. I was a producer on the show. You can imagine what happened. I called my office when I heard this. And he and he might have been right. He might have been mistreated, right? But I called him in. But word was coming back to me. Your guy's causing problem on the set. Your mm -hmm. guy. Your guy's causing problem. Your guy. Your guy. So I called him in. I said, you're messing with me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Because I vouch for you. I vouch for you. And now people are saying Cameron's guy is a problem. So that's saying wow. Cameron is the problem. They're not even using your name. Cameron's guy is the problem. Cameron first. Cameron's yeah, guy. Cameron's yeah. guy is the problem. So now when Gina was let go, your girl is the problem. Your girl is an anti-Semite. There's no worse label you can use in Hollywood. Oof. Your girl that you vouch for is an anti-Semite. You think that didn't yeah. sting him and hurt his personal life? Gotcha. For years? Now, gotcha. time now. to settle the score. Yeah. All right. Revenge and of the Sith. Yeah. And that's go. and this is just beginning. I am going to make a prediction here okay. on this channel. I predict that more is coming. I predict that now that the Forbes has become the go-to place for airing Disney's ugly, dirty laundry, and Mr. Favreau will continue to get that out there. I would not be surprised if some dirt finally starts coming out on the acolyte. Right, because here's an interesting thing, hmm. and I'm going to give a very specific prediction. I could be wrong. Act like comes and goes, and whatever. Uh, but now, I this this is this is a, we're getting into prediction territory, guys. We speculation did scoops, but speculation. now uh, yeah, we went to scoops of what's happening on the scenes. Mm -hmm. Now speculation, okay? But it's my speculation based on on looking at the tea leaves that are in front of me, and the tea leaves are the John Favreau. Certainly, somebody inside of Disney is leaking information to, to Forbes uh, that's providing very detailed financial embarrassment. Right. Right. That's not information she could find easily because they're hidden corporate entities. So somebody's leaking the information as to what these corporate entities are to her and what the details are. Right. And she's doing her job, an excellent job as a journalist. Right. But a journalist has to find sources. When I was a journalist, I had to have somebody tell me, you need to be looking into this direction. Right. Mm -hmm. You just have to make it up. Right. Somebody's pointing out. So my sources that, that Favreau and I go together are doing that. Right. So, but here's the thing what is the thing she's consistently doing, Ms. Reed on Forbes? She's finding UK projects that are under UK filings, and then she's finding the hidden filings in the UK system under that name and revealing and then adding up the numbers and making sense of it, right? Mm. So there's a lot of work and she's doing it. What else is being filmed in the UK? Willow was being filmed in the UK, right? Ant-Man and Quantumania were being filmed in the UK. What mm. else was being filmed in the UK? The Snow Acolyte. White was? Snow White and the Acolyte. And right? the Acolyte. And the Acolyte, okay. So with the Acolyte, I've long said, based on my sources, that uh, something very fishy is happening there. Like, you know, my sources last year believed that it would never end up coming on air. Looks like they were wrong. Looks like it's probably going to come on air, right? Uh, you know, eventually they said, looks like forces greater than anybody's control is forcing this project to be released, right? And so it's going to be released. But does not does it mean it has to be released in any way that uh, is beneficial to it? So we saw, finally we saw a trailer for it after two years of talking about this project. We finally see a trailer for it like two or three weeks ago, right? And yep. what happens on that trailer? They they do what they've never done before. They haven't done it in a few years. They leave on the dislike button, in the uh, you know because Kennedy had asked YouTube to shut off the dislike button because every time she came you're, on, you are you are correct, sir. And that bu button vanished, and then the button is back now for the acolyte, and it's massively disliked. Hundreds of thousands. I don't know what the current number is, but I'm probably Let's get probably the current number of... right now. Mm -hmm. Um, as of May 13th, yeah, uh, recording of this, the Acolyte official trailer Disney Plus on the Star Wars site, yep, uh, which has a million point one subscribers, and this is, has 6.1 million views, 69,000 likes, 154,000 dislikes. So looking at uh, more than double, 2.5 almost of, uh, you know, ratio. And they left that on so anybody like you can just confirm it and see people don't want to see the show. You would think that since it's their own website, they control whether you know that. And everyone's saying here, surprised to see a comment section Disney hasn't deleted. So you got the comments, you got the dislike button, you're at, you, you here. They I'm backing this up. This is this is I'm looking at it right now. You're you are right. Why is why has that happened? Why is that? Because they've never they're, done because they're, they're letting it out. You know, John Favreau's telling people, mm -hmm. "Hey, leave that button on. Let let the world know." First of all, I ain't associated with this garbage, and let the world know that this ain't me, and the fans don't want it. Right? Okay, you're forcing me to put this out there, this crap. Mm -hmm. And my source said that when Favreau saw the footage, 
you know, last fall. He said, this is the worst fan film I've ever seen, quote unquote, literal quote. It's the worst fan film. He's like, this is garbage. But I'm being forced by political forces I don't understand to put it out there. Fine, I'll put it out there, but I'm going to hurt it. I'm going to hurt it hard, right? Because mm -hmm. this is this is unworthy of the work that I've done. It's it's damaging my work. So I'm going to let people know this thing. Fans don't want this crap, right? Gotcha. And so so number one, so we get that. So now, now bringing it back to Carolyn Reed. So she's been doing UK filings. Accolade is a UK show. And it, you know, it has UK corporate, uh, I think Blue Stockings was its fake, was its fake corporate name, right? Now, something our friend Stephanie Janicek actually noticed this. I had noticed, I think she's she noticed that she wrote about it on my Patreon this morning. Mm -hmm. She said, if you look at the because we now know what the Willow corporate fake name is in the UK that they used the corporate entity, because that was revealed in the Forbes article. Mm -hmm. She let, so she started. She said, "Well, you know that you can research it and find out. Okay, well, where is that entity in in the corporate UK system? And the entity shares the same exact office as the acolyte. Oh. So they, it's the same. It's they just just use the same <laughs> office. So that's the. It's, it's the same. You know, it's is it a legit office or is it just an address? It's probably like a post office box or something, right? Because we know they right. weren't. We know they weren't filing things on time. The right. UK government complained. You see, guys, last guys that don't know that you know." people that don't know production, which is a majority of you guys watch. Yes. Yeah. And, and unfortunately a majority of, uh, of, of these big channels of these yeah. big channels that never worked on a, an actual production. Yes. <laughs> this happens all the time. guys. Yeah, this happens. And, and so this is what it is. So this is, so now, uh, you've got, so now you've got the same corporate address for the acolyte as in the, the UK uh, for tax purposes, for, the, for tax purposes. So the same shell, entity mm -hmm. with a different name is being used right so if if ms reed has already investigated the same exact address yeah the filings that are coming out of that how long before she starts investigating the other thing that's coming out of that office she may already have right and so I, my prediction is that forbes or others will start leaking problems mm -hmm. financial problems on the acolyte right Things because even setting that nothing about that show makes any sense. Mm. Nobody can figure out anything about it, right? Nobody can figure out how much money it costs to make. Nobody can figure out is Carrie. You know, this show is supposedly coming out in two weeks. Where the hell's Carrie Ann Moss? Why is she not promoting it? Why is she not? I mean, it? in a in okay, so we're, let's wrap it up. And everyone yeah. has been incredible. Uh, if you're watching this on our live premiere chatting with us that's awesome if you're watching this on the replay leave a comment yep. leave a comment and you know uh we'll i'll do my best to answer everyone and uh make sure you are subscribed and check out cameron's patreon which is i will have the top link in the video box description that's where all um, this information is coming out of so you know, in you know, in the world right yes. a Kyrian moss project film is gonna get major major coverage because she is beloved she has yes. fans. She's got the Matrix fans. I mean, I am a Carrie Ann Moss fan. So I'm torn because I want her to succeed, but it's this, not at this. So, yeah. Where is well, she, she doesn't want to succeed at this either because she ain't talking about it. Why? She ain't talking about it. I mean, she should be. She hasn't. We haven't seen her in a few years. We haven't seen her since the Matrix, you know, this new version, which not a lot of people liked, right? She, okay. She's a wonderful actress who deserves to have continuing big roles. You would think this is her big comeback and a big Disney Star Wars thing. You got a, you got a this this weird trailer. You was so, have her holding a lightsaber. You'd think she's talking about it. Why is she not talking about it? And there's no answer to that. That's rational. She don't want to be associated with it. Like nobody wants to be associated with this. Okay. Whatever so... happened on that show doesn't want people don't want to be talking about it. And so my final prediction is that okay. that people will news media, particularly Ms. Reed, will start looking into the acolyte. And if Ms. Reed, if you're watching this, I urge you to look into the acolyte because it's going to be a bigger news story than whatever you're finding right now. So apparently, we will find out what this show is about. If everything goes well, it comes out in June. For allegedly. Month. Allegedly, so we're gonna find out. We're gonna see either way, right? May you know we're we're gonna see what what is going on with that show, and your your bold prediction after all the after all these scoops is that yeah. this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This is the Ms. Reed is becoming a bulldog against Disney. 
She's getting accolades for this, right? People are saying Carolyn Reed is the woman that's taking on Disney. I mean, as a journalist, this is big news. This is this is like you know all the president's men, right? Well, She's and that's, what I, was, and that's right. what I was telling you is that with that Snow White uh, mm -hmm. uh, Forbes article, and then the uh, the other one uh, mm -hmm. article, they were all you know kind of you know. Oh, but even in this one, dropped, even in this one, they were all dropped. One. Let me just finish. They were I'm all sorry. dropped, you know, later at night, almost in the middle of the night as well. Which I brought up in my in my in yeah. my videos. I was like, you know, that's that's that's, that's peculiar, guys. Just you know, make that a note. I mean, it might might, might be small, might be big, but the fact that it it dropped 10 p.m. on a Friday night, <laughs> that's kind of strange. Well, because again, this is the, you you are trying the people that are the, she's in control. Ms. Reed doesn't control the, her editors control when things get released, right? They have yeah. a schedule. So and my in, and if the editors are working with powerful people inside of Disney, they're going to fulfill that agenda, which is we want to get the word out. We also don't want to cause too much problems that it mm. burns Iger, right? So we, yeah. we don't want. So we want these conversations that are happening on your channel right now. We don't necessarily want the New York Times, you know, building up on it, right? And so they get their credit and they also get to keep their relationships, right? Uh, and so that's that's behind this. So th this is all planned, and I think the plan, if the logical next step of the plan is if you're going to go into the office in the UK, you know, it's building towards it. First, you start looking at UK filings. Then you look at UK filings at this specific address. And then at that address, the next thing at that address is the acolyte. I mean, mm -hmm. Ms. Reed, you should, I, you should be going there. I mean, it's right there in front of you. All right. Finally, Cameron, uh, let people know about, we're going to wrap it up. Let yeah. people know about your, your, uh, your Patreon. Yes. What, what's the entry level to that? I'm, a, I'm in that level. Yeah. And uh, what can people expect? Uh, you know, because it, it's pretty riveting stuff, man. Well, well, thank you very much. I've had this Patreon now for almost three years. Uh, it's, it's, you'll have the link, but it's Patreon slash my name, Cameron Pasha. I think you can see my name on the screen, and you'll find it. And uh, and I try to post as much as possible. You know, I remember some Patrons will post once a month. And I'm like, hey, dude, man, I'm giving you money. What are we, what's this once a month thing going on, right? But I try to post daily. Uh, you know, both my commentary, what's happening in Hollywood, and then and then stuff like this where insiders, not just insiders Lucasfilm, I've got other contacts in Disney and other companies that will feed me information that you're that you're you know gonna get on the Patreon. And most of it has panned out correctly, right? Some of it takes time to pan out and you have to endure people saying that it's not true until it becomes true and then nobody mm -hmm. remembers you said it, right? Uh, and so- and No one remembers you said know, it. They intentionally don't remember it, right? You know, yeah. but whatever. But, but the information is there and anyone can go yeah. to my Patreon and see how, you know, what's there. And so, the stuff that I've talked about today on Polly's wonderful channel here on Latino Slant is just the surface of what's going on because it's not just the information I'm revealing on the Patreon. There's a lot of commentary. I've got a lot of great members who yeah, do their own do. investigative stuff. Like like they like Stephanie just found out on my Patreon. Hey, look, this this the address is the same. So there's Correct. other. It's creating its right. own lively community of intellect. Correct, and you know, and uh, also too, you have a lot of people that are in the business. Yeah. No, no, there, there's there's real people. There's there's people. I mean, there's there's people. There are screenwriters. There are well-known screenwriters that are members of my Patreon. There are there are people that are studio executives, right? Uh, there are and and they they come in and they comment. And so this is this is this is becoming a professional community. And the entry level is very easy. It's five bucks a month. It's five bucks. Yeah. It's like it's like one cup of coffee at Starbucks, right? Well, guys, this has been an amazing hour. It doesn't even feel like it, but we we've gone an hour with Cameron. Yeah, yeah. we're going to time mark everything if you guys missed anything you can always jump into uh all those we're gonna say now at least three and a half scoops <laughs> yeah well the, the three at least three scoops and one speculation that i think is gonna come right right got the speculation but um stay tuned here guys for the latino slant we cover a lot of stuff um uh, as as well as uh, movie reviews all that good jazz thank you so much cameron for being here with us Wonderful and, as always. Uh, we'll uh, we'll have you on soon all right, guys, wherever you're at, keep your slam fuerte. Gracias. Bye. <laughs>